Hello everyone! If you've ever worked in computer graphics before, you should be well aware of the arduous task of collaborating with others on one project, or simply just moving something from one program to another. It would be convenient if there was some data format that existed that unified everything, from Blender to Maya to Unity to Unreal to Substance to Houdini, one file format that connects it all. This is a problem that Pixar has been working to solve for decades, and in 2016, they decided to open source their work for everyone to use under the name OpenUSD. No, not the currency. USD stands for Universal Scene Description, and since it's open sourcing, it has been adopted by numerous industries beyond just animated movies. Its impact is so great that last year, a number of companies came together to form the Alliance for OpenUSD, a coordinated effort to standardize and develop the data format. If Apple adopts a standard instead of forcing everyone to use their own, it's probably a big deal. So today, we'll be going over why USD exists, the problems it solves, and how it might be able to help you and your creative pipelines. Normally, my videos are on agnostic graphics theory, meaning that the ideas apply to any context, regardless of engine, and I try to avoid talking about specific tooling to maximize educational value. USD, though, will be my first exception, because it is so universal and widely adopted by now that it might as well be equivalent to the agnostic ideas that I usually discuss. To understand why USD is so useful, though, we must first understand the problem it is seeking to solve. USD stands for Universal Scene Description so we can assume that it describes scenes universally. But what even is a scene? A scene is ultimately just a collection of 3D objects, but this is a gross oversimplification of the complexity involved. Take for instance this screenshot of Final Fantasy XIV. There are a number of 3D objects that compose the scene, from my player character, to the castle, to the buildings, and the bridge. These objects are made up of arbitrary 3D data, such as the mesh. An object is made up of vertices, and the triangles create from those vertices, but there is also the per-vertex data such as normals, tangents, colors, UV coordinates, or whatever else is needed that gets interpolated across the triangles during shading. Then there's the material data, which is the instantiation of a shader. Materials also encapsulate texture references and arbitrary shader uniform data, and whatever else the referenced shader needs. The scene also holds the transformation data of each object, such as its position, scale, and rotation. There's also the rigging information of each object, but we won't be talking about that as USD currently cannot describe rigs. So really, a scene is like a container for a whole lot of other containers, all of which are composed of arbitrary 3D data that we as humans can give names to to understand what it means, but a computer has no idea what a 3D object or material is until a software developer tells it what it is. We have now identified the problem, because software developers all have different ideas of how to encode, parse, and format that arbitrary data, resulting in the incompatibilities across 3D software pipelines. Even though Unity has materials and meshes and whatever else, this is why you can't just export a Unity scene and throw it into Blender or Unreal, because even though the concepts are the same, the implementations diverge. This is where USD saves the day by setting a standard for how this 3D data should be formatted and interpreted, allowing us to use our data across all kinds of different software. This isn't some hypothetical future, by the way. USD has already changed the game and set the standard over the past eight years. Pretty much everything has support for it now. I don't need to convince you to adopt it. So since it's already seen widespread adoption, let me show you how I used it for some simple procedural mesh generation as an example of its potential. But first, something a little different. This video has been sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. Brilliant offers thousands of lessons from basic to advanced. So if you're just getting started learning math or are brushing up on your linear algebra for graphics programming, Brilliant has something for you. Even if you don't know where to start Start, that's not a problem. Brilliant customizes its content to fit what you need. Just take a short quiz when you sign up, and Brilliant will match you with lessons that fit your interests and level of expertise. I personally use Brilliant whenever I need a quick refresher on math concepts that I haven't worked with in a while, and I think it's a great starting point for someone looking to improve their math skills for game development. A lot of the lessons can be applied to shader programming as well to create novel effects such as fractal rendering. Be sure to try out everything Brilliant has to offer with a free 
free 30-day trial and 20% off an annual plan when you visit brilliant.org forward slash acerola or click the link in the description. While I was making this video, some of the engineers on the OpenUSD team were disgruntled at the title. They really don't like it when you refer to USD as a file format, because they're right. It isn't really just a file format, and to refer to it as such downplays the efforts of the team. But I couldn't think of a better title, and they also aren't paying me, so... Sorry. In the macroscope, the value of USD goes far beyond setting a standard for formatting 3D data. It's really a whole ecosystem of open source software, including Hydra, a lightweight rendering engine for viewing USD scenes easily, and a massive, well-documented Python API for interfacing with and creating USD files. It even has a whole physics API for some reason. I was personally interested in the generation of USD files with Python, because imagine this. You want to write a cool display Displacement shader in Unity, such as a vertex shader that displaces a plane's vertices according to a height map for terrain. That sounds like so much fun. Wow. You open up Unity, you use the editor to create a plane mesh, and you write your amazing vertex shader that samples a height map and displaces accordingly. But then you realize the default Unity plane is only 10 by 10 quads, and the vertex density is just not enough for a decent height map visualization. You look for a way to create a higher resolution plane in the editor, but it's surprisingly not possible. Your dreams of a beautifully displaced plane are shattered. From here, there are a number of solutions, such as just using Blender or some 3D software to create a vertex-dense plane and then exporting it to Unity, or you could write a C-sharp script making use of Unity's own mesh API to procedurally generate a dense plane, or you could use Python and USD. In the context of this simple example, just doing it in Blender is probably the correct choice, but for the sake of the conversation, let's go with USD. As I mentioned earlier, a mesh is composed of vertices which connect to form triangles. Since we want a plane, the simplest, lowest resolution plane possible is just four vertices, which become two triangles to form a quad. But what coordinate space are these vertices defined in? USD is normal in that it is by default a Z-up right-handed coordinate system, meaning Y increases towards the viewer instead of away. This clashes with Unity, as Unity is a Y-up left-handed coordinate system, pretty much the exact opposite. Thankfully, USD lets us change these settings all we want. We can set the up axis to Y and add an orientation attribute to our object that informs 3D software that it should be parsed as left-handed. It even lets us set the default units, so we can change it so that one unit is one meter, like it is in Unity. Now when we define the vertex positions of our object, the coordinates will be just like if we were doing it in Unity, but this is purely syntactic sugar, as ultimately it'll be converted to whatever coordinate system is used by the 3D software we want to use USD in. Then we define our four vertices, which in Python is just an array of tuples. Next is when it gets a little complicated, defining the triangles. We need a list of indices that informs the 3D software which vertices make up the triangles. An index of zero points to our first defined vertex, and so on. With our first triangle being made up of indices 0, 1, and 2, and our second triangle being made up of indices 2, 1, and 3. Notice how our two triangles share two vertices. This is a mesh optimization that saves a ton of data by avoiding all those duplicate points that we would have if each triangle had its own three dedicated vertices. Next, we tell our USD object how many faces there are and how many points make up the faces, as well as how many triangle indices there are. Lastly, we define the bounds of our object. A bounding box is the smallest box that can contain our object that we can pair with the camera when rendering. If the box does not intersect with the camera frustum, then there's no point in wasting resources on rendering it, and it can be discarded. Normally, we would also add material data to our object, as USD does have a full material API and built-in PBR surface shader that you can use to have a PBR material that is compatible with all 3D software, but we already have our shader and material written in Unity, so we can skip that part. After we call save with the USD API and execute the Python script, it'll spit out a USD file that we can import into Unity with their USD package. As you can see, we have a beautiful quad that is the same size as one quad in the Unity plane, demonstrating that the coordinate systems match. Obviously, we wanted more than just one quad though, so let's turn this quad into a vertex-dense plane for our height map shader. What is a plane, if not many quads? Since we have one quad, adding more should be a breeze. Right now, our mesh data is hard-coded, and you could certainly just copy and paste a bunch if you wanted, but this is 
Python, so we can programmatically generate the vertices instead. Given a desired length and width of our plane, we loop and append the vertex positions to an array. Then we have to triangulate the vertices. We can do one whole quad at a time in the loop, but we want to skip the last vertex in a row because it's included in the previous iteration. Lastly, we provide the length info to the USD API with a fancy Python list comprehension and the basic length function, as well as the bounding box based on the length and width of the plane. After running the Python script, it saves over the USD file, and as you can see, we don't actually have to re-import it into Unity. Unity already detected the changes to our existing USD import and hot reloaded the data for us, which is pretty cool. A length and width of 10 gives us an exact copy of the default Unity plane that can be created in the editor, but as demonstrated earlier, we need more vertices for a more accurate height map visualization. We can multiply our vertex positions in the loop by some scale value, up the length and width of our plane to a larger value, and we finally have our high resolution plane. This may have seemed like a complex process, but in reality, it's like 30 lines of Python code, with most of that being appends. Replacing Unity's default material with our vertex displacement material, we finally have a beautifully displaced plane. Okay, so like, what's the big deal here? If you aren't a programmer, then I guess it's hard to explain the value of this basic procedural mesh generation script, but really, the possibilities are endless. We can generate any kind of mesh we want, not just planes. You could expand this to generate spheres, cubes, pyramids, waves, or you could go beyond basic primitives and do some more advanced procedural mesh generation, like triangulating a density function with marching cubes or dual contouring. We could also do our displacement to the vertex themselves at bake time with a Python noise library, which we could extend even further by writing a Python height map generator that displaces the mesh vertices while also exporting a high resolution version of the height map for use in tessellation. So having a tool that could handle both the low res and high res mesh all at the same time while saving certain data to disk as textures would be useful, and this is the kind of stuff you would make as a tools engineer in the games industry. The USD API provides you with pretty much all the functionality you need to create your own set of tools to fit your goals and needs when it comes to creating or parsing arbitrary 3D data. And since it's all Python, it's pretty accessible to learn if you're not an experienced programmer, and if you are experienced, it's really easy to write. It's true that all of this could be done with Unity scripting or Blender scripting, but remember that the core value of USD is its compatibility with pretty much everything. If I attach a basic USD material to the plane, we can also use it just fine in Blender. I can even make changes to it and then export the USD to be further modified with a Python script or imported back into Unity. But Ace Rolla, what about performance? None of this has anything to do with real-time rendering or the performance of your game beyond the obvious stuff like generating too many triangles. Your Python scripts could be the slowest in the world. As long as it finishes before you die, then it doesn't really matter. At this point, I think I have fairly demonstrated the value and potential of a USD tools pipeline. Line. So let me give my genuine thoughts and feelings on the subject. Let's talk about the elephants in the room. If you search around about USD stuff right now, you'll come across a whole lot of cringe generative AI stuff. This isn't because USD is a generative AI thing, but because USD is the perfect data format for AI to generate. USD is completely compartmentalized and can be assembled together into scenes by generative AI with ease. And so many people are wrapping these AI generation models with text models in order to do text to USD type stuff. Obviously, none of this is really adjacent to game development though, and it'll never be targeted towards game development as the intended audience is tech bros. I chose to talk about it in this video despite the AI relations because I think it could begin to see wide adoption in the game development industry. Game dev is pretty slow to adjust to new standards due to immense technical debt, but the more people that begin creating USD tooling, the more we can create value for everyone instead of just users of specific 3D software. Will I start writing my tools for USD? Maybe. I personally don't do a lot of mesh stuff since I'm a shader guy, but when I get around to doing terrain generation, I'll probably use USD for terrain tooling. Both Unity and Unreal have support for USD, but Godot does not. While I was at SIGGRAPH, I asked about Godot support and they expressed interest in it, and I spoke with the Godot people and they said they are interested in a USD plugin as well. So, if you're a Godot developer and you would like 
like to see USD support, be sure to express that in the comments or on Twitter or whatever to show the Alliance for OpenUSD that it's worth funding a Godot integration. It's something I would really like to see as someone considering a move to the engine. Overall, USD is the latest standard in 3D data formatting, but with all the massive companies backing it and its huge library of open source tooling to help you create and manage your own tools, USD might just be the one that's here to stay. As usual, a huge thank you to all of my current patrons. Without your support, I wouldn't be able to go to PAX West this week. I'll be at PAX West booth 856, helping my friend with his game, Ollie Frog. Come say hi and check out the game. Anyways, that's all from me. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.